In this video, I explain how economists think about production uh, as a way to lay a foundation for the concept of supply. Supply is a few uh, lectures off from this, but once you see how production turns into costs, you'll see why we lay the foundation this way, because it's very similar to the utility maximization problem. So let's examine uh, a production function. This production function takes two inputs, K and L, and turns them into an output, which we call Q. But K stands for capital, the machines, the computers, the desks, that sort of thing. And L stands for labor. Now surely there are more inputs, but this is going to be a useful simplification of the production process. You may be asking yourself, well, how are we going to work with this? This is two inputs, and that's one output. We've done quite a bit of work with a function just like this before. This utility is a function of x and y. And the way we dealt with a problem dealing with this is we graph the inputs x and y in the horizontal and vertical axis. And we talked about indifference curves, that is, points in this plane of x and y that give this individual the same utility. Every point has an indifference curve, they're shaped nice and convex to the origin like this. And we thought about budget constraints. In other words, if we were able to purchase this with our income, spending all of our money on Y, and purchase this if we spend all of our money on X, well then we could purchase anything in between, not just a line between those two points, and that was going to be our budget constraint. And we had a special idea there, that that point where it's tangent, just tangent between the budget constraint and the difference curve, well that was our optimal bundle. Well, if we come over here to producer land, things aren't going to be much different. We're going to deal with this problem of how do we think about how inputs turn into outputs by graphing the inputs on the axis, just like we graph the inputs to our utility function on the axis. And we're going to have constant quantity lines. So if I use this much capital, this much labor, I can produce just as much as using this much capital and that much labor. And you can see that there's a similar trade-off as we have over here if we think about if I have this much x and that much y, I can produce this much utility. I'll just think about it the same way here. And now we're thinking about producing a given quantity. So the labels on these indifference curve-like things which we'll call isoquants for same quantity, labels now have some meaning. Well, it turns out that firms aren't constrained in the same ways that individuals are. If you go over here, we have a budget constraint, and we're saying, well, if you're an individual, you spend all of your money on X and Y, you have to spend, uh, you have to spend less than what you have. Well, a firm doesn't necessarily have a fixed budget. It's not like we would have to do something like this. They're not fixed underneath some budget amount. And in fact, that, that would be kind of a strange firm if you're thinking about, well, the firms in the real world don't just sit, sit down and say, well, I can only have so much of a budget. The way we're going to think about this problem here is think about it a little bit backwards from the utility maximization problem over there. We're going to ask ourselves, what if we do an equality here for some budget? We ask, well, where is this line on this plane? Well, that's going to look like a budget constraint. I'm going to call this B1. And it's going to be a budget constraint such that the expenditures along that line add up to B1. So let's draw it in here. Well, that's just one possible choice of the expenditures. We could have chosen 
a whole different amount of expenditures, total expenditures. And in fact, we could have chosen a smaller one. Say we want to produce quantity Q0. We're able to produce this quantity there. We're able to produce this quantity here. But, if we move along this indifference curve like this, we can produce the same quantity anywhere along that line. And it turns out that what the firm does is the firm, instead of maximizing utility or maximizing quantity for a given budget, what they do is they minimize their expenditures, this B, subject to staying on this particular target quantity. So what they do is they move this budget line inward. They don't change the prices. All they do is they try to pick L and K so that they minimize the expenditures. When they do that, what they'll get is they'll get a, a budget-like line that's just tangent, just like over there. But the logic is different. What they're doing is they're drawing their costs down, picking the minimum cost bundle that, of inputs that gets them at least that quantity. Here is going to be the cost minimizing bundle, L star and K star. And if we think about how much that would have to cost, well, that would just be B star. Where B star is just going to be how much this bundle, L star and K star, costs at the prices for labor and capital. And so we can think about, for each quantity, we can think about a different optimal budget. We can think about the minimum cost way of attaining any given quantity. And what that will give us, that will give us something called the cost function. And it's a function of quantity. And so that's really the idea of what we'll be doing. This is sort of the big picture problem that we're going to start off with in producer theory. And this is really not any different than what's going on over here with our utility maximization problem. We maximize utility subject to a fixed budget constraint here. Here, we're minimizing the cost of attaining a given quantity. We can do that for any given quantity. But when we do that, that gives us a function of quantity that tells us to minimize expenditure as a function of quantity. And it turns out that this cost function is going to be very important for supply. So to summarize, we can use and apply a lot of the tools that we learned in consumer theory and translate them over into producer theory. They remain very useful. And we will exploit a lot of them and a lot of that knowledge to build on that and to build a theory of supply.